right vinyl community you know how it goes um, I'm doing a lot of videos in a row <laughs> then I disappear for a while because I have enough of that shit I was driving today and I was uh, thinking about um, I've been showing a lot of mainstream stuff lately and uh, I know a couple of people come here for the more obscure stuff so I came home, uh, flipped through the collection a little bit here and there and pulled out some stuff in the background. This one was playing in the car today. I haven't had that one on in quite a while. This is 1995's Mind Rot. Dawning. They classed themselves as a doom metal band. They had a couple of demos out before that. Uh, is it a doom band? It's doom, it's death metal, it has some hardcore influences, it has lots of groove, just it's a brilliant record. It has some gothic influences. Uh, this one was originally released on, uh, on Relapse Records. This is a nuclear blast pressing. I bought it when it came out in 95. And this is one that gets a spin from time to time. But today I was blown away by it. I don't know if, if, if that's correct. To my ears, it sounds a little bit like the stuff uh, Trypticon is doing now or uh, the Monotheist album uh, from uh, Static Frost, the reunion album. great just check it out for a while keyboards on there I forgot I pulled up the records but I didn't pull out a beer for me yeah this time without a beer <clears throat> Okay, obscure stuff. In 1982, a British heavy metal band that uh, I guess only a, a couple of people who watch my videos know about um, released an album. And uh, they pretty much stayed underground. I don't know if it was their only album. I didn't follow them <clears throat> very much. I know they had something out before that and the album is called <clears throat> The Number of the Beast by a British band called Iron Maiden. That was a bad joke, was it? I'm just um, killing some time to get you in there. Discog says it's doom metal. Not really, it's a mixed bag. I love it. Okay, now seriously. The first one I pulled out is a mini LP from 1989 by a German band called Toxin. And uh, the mini album I always forget Aphorisms out on Black Fantasy Records, a German record label. I, I think this is the only one I've got from that record label. I should look it up if they ever released something else. The production on here is pretty good for an underground label, for an underground band. Look at them and tell me what style of music they play. Yes, German. Thrash Metal from 1989, uh, like I said. The sound on here is uh, very cool. Um, 
fresh collage here you have to add it mini lp here's the lyrics for the songs great i haven't spun this in a while i i didn't buy that in in 89 i bought that in the, the early 90s early to mid 90s very cheap i don't know if it's worth anything but yeah toxin want to see the label yeah same there cool little ep i have i will keep that out of out of the collection now and spin it a little bit tonight when i got my beer from uh, the fridge next up maybe a couple of people know about that uh, an LP from 1986 out on New Renaissance Records Postmortems Coroner's Office again uh, thrash metal more on the harsh side a little bit of uh, hardcore and punk in there music wise but the uh, the vocals are insane on that one I love that look at the singer how mean he looks yeah John McCarthy great little LP if you haven't heard that one uh, check it out it's early no nah, not early thrash metal but it's uh, a thrash metal bordering on uh, bordering on death metal a little bit so very early on death metal influences it comes with a little a lyric sheet and of course a little collage no band members on here yeah coroner's office they released as far as i know another mini lp called the missing link if i'm correct i had that one but i sold it because that one was more on the, the, the punky hardcore side but i decided to keep the uh, coroner's office lp back to listen to that now it's doom Back to Germany, 1984. This is an LP called Deflorator by a band called TNT. Typical German heavy metal, a little bit of accept influences, a little bit of uh, boogie in there, a little bit of hard rock. Um, no mustaches on the band photo although it's 84 that's a bit disappointing yeah what can i say about that ah herman frank does some uh, lead guitar <laughs> some lead guitar on there as a special guest okay 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 Hairstyling by uh, Stefan Bettendorf. So, hairstyling. They needed a hairstylist exclusively for this guy. The cover artwork is fantastic. As a lot of 80s um, metal, especially German metal, is. Yeah, okay, the US is not, not far behind. <laughs> and Deflorator. Only a German band can name their album Deflorator. It's out on SL Records. Like I said, 1984. SL put out some really cool stuff in the 80s. Love that label. Back to the US of A and from 84 
forward to 1991. US based uh, death metal band. They were managed by uh, what is his name? The old death manager. Uh, <laughs> I'm drawing blank on that now. Uh, Eric uh, Grief, Eric Greif. Viogression. And this is a pretty cool record. Um, it's not the very first press uh, because I can't remember. This is uh, the the European press uh, that came out on Tombstone Records uh, from London in England. There you go, and it's produced by Eric. Very, very harsh vocals on that. Uh, a little bit like uh, John Tardy in Obituary. The songs are a little bit faster than Obituary. This one was a classic back then, a classic, yeah, classic in, in, in brackets, in big brackets. I should have seen them live. They played, uh, they should have played uh, the European uh, human tour with a death and pestilence, but pestilence bailed out and uh, Viogression ran out of money before the trip even started. So instead of Viogression, I saw Tiamat play on the Astral Sleep LP and Loud Blast instead of uh, Pestilence. And Death played for about uh, 30 minutes as a headliner. Yeah. Viogression, if you haven't heard it, I know Steve over at uh, SMT Young has shown that one. Well worth checking out. Okay, over to uh, Sweden. A couple of people might know their very first LP, but this is their EP that came before. Swedish band a Torch and their first LP, a self-titled LP, in 1982. Mine has got a water damage. Yeah, split wide open, deflorated, so to say. Huh? <laughs> this is a classic a Swedish heavy metal. No mark, it's not. HM2 soaked uh, Swedish death metal, it's just Swedish heavy metal. And it's got, of course, the Swedish magic to it. Look at the cover artwork. It, do try to get it just because of the cover artwork. It's, this is not, not an expensive one. It's, indeed, it's a very, very cheap record. Mine is the mausoleum pressing. I know there's uh, an, another Swedish pressing. All of the uh, old uh, Torch albums, the first EP, uh, self-titled LP, and uh, Electric Kisses, I think was uh, <clears throat> the title for the second LP. Great stuff. They are active again. They broke up for a while. I haven't heard the new stuff. I'm not interested. The first three is all that I need. So, five songs on here. Swedish Magic. Like I said, on the Mausoleum label, and those who are still watching know how a Mausoleum label looks like. I'm not gonna show that. Again, back to Germany. This one is really, really quite obscure. This one came out in 1990 on, is it West Virginia Records? Yes. West Virginia Records was uh, the record label of the uh, Holy Moses uh, couple, Sabina and Andy Clausen. Yeah. <laughs> In Bühne, Borgentreich. 
<laughs> Bühne. I've, I've been there, the, the studio uh, that Andy Klaassen runs is, is still there. 1990, Howling Mad. Now you know how the band looks like. The cover looks like that. Howling Mad was a... Uh, mm, is it? Yeah, it's death uh, fresh. Very deathy vocals, very harsh. Um, very cool um, guitar players. Like them, I really like them. Uh, and you've got uh, Sabina Klaassen of Holy Moses sang some backing vocals on the album. So Howling Mad. Who of you guys, let me know in the comments, who of you guys know about that record? Like I said, West Virginia Records, <clears throat> 1990. No insert on that, no nothing. And I'm gonna show you the label because it's so fucking boring. Look at that. Almost looks like a private press, but too much, too much text on here for a private press. And the other side looks the same. As boring as it can get, huh? And I'm pretty boring because I am gonna receive the records here. Without telling any stories. Listen to that. That's what I mean with uh, the uh, gothic touches on <clears throat> on the Mind Rot album. A little bit like uh, Fields of the Nephilim. Okay, U.S. Uh, speed metal. Yes, uh, there is uh, some something that I call U.S. speed metal. You know, U.S. power metal. And the difference between uh, US and European power metal, and now I'm gonna tell you what US speed metal is. The second album by Savage Steel, Do or Fucking Die. Holy shit, as boring as that cover is, as amazing as that record. The sound is a little bit uh, demo-ish. Their first album has got a classic, classic uh, cover artwork. But music-wise, I like that one better. It's uh, fast, it's uh, furious, and you've got some soaring high vocals on that one. Look at that. That image is pretty cool, though. That would make a nice t-shirt. So there you go. Uh, these are the guys. This one is out, excuse me, out on Maze Music. Printed and made in Canada. But they are from the US. Indiana, yeah. Yeah. Again, late 80s pressings. Uh, sometimes uh, they uh, didn't have enough money. Of course, a record label like Maze, they don't want to invest too much on a lyric sheet. So that's everything that you get. At least there's a band photo on it. From what I can remember, the first one didn't even have a band photo. It, it's got a look up Savage Steel and their album from 1982. Where story begins, something like that. Awesome cover artwork. I should have pulled that out. This is the old Maze Music label. Do check out the, f the first two songs, Matter Over Matter. It's almost hilarious because it's got, uh, it's something like a blast beat. It's not really a blast beat and the soaring high vocals over it. I heard that one not in, not in 88, also maybe early 90s, mid 90s. 
and I had to laugh so much. I was so much into death metal and quit the heavy metal and power metal stuff for a while and someone put on that and I thought holy shit <laughs> I love it <coughs> immediately went out and bought the album that one was available available for a couple of uh, Deutsche Marks back then I don't know if it's worth anything but great album and last but not least we're going over to Sweden again and it's not Swedish heavy metal magic this time it's a Swedish uh, thrash magic Tribulation with Clown of Thorns from 1991 this one came out on Blackmark Records remember Edge of Sanity or Bathory yeah Swedish uh, thrash metal uh, played very harsh punky influences on there a lot of songs on the album short songs but the album is only I don't know 40 minutes 35 to 40 minutes long yeah some cool stuff on here oh we, we talked about the Nephilim and he he's got the Nephilim shirt on nice <laughs> didn't you realize that you can tell by the pretty goofy cover and uh, there you've got some uh, Donald Duck stuff. This is not on, not so serious, more on the funny side. Landslide of losers and black mark. They donated the album a lyric sheet and of course <clears throat> to equal out the costs the backside <clears throat> has an ad for some more <laughs> releases from Blackmark. Of course half of the page is a battery. Yes, always support the family. I'm sure you you know that uh, Quarthon's father rest in peace um, run that label black mark so tribulation 1991 I'm gonna show you the label because I can there you go and that's not typical black mark a custom centering on that side and look at the quality of the album. That one don't get, uh, don't, doesn't get very much spins, but yeah, for that age, it doesn't look mint, it is mint. <laughs> All right, that's it. Let me know what you think. Um, of the more obscure stuff I show should I do that a little bit more or do you want to see the mainstream stuff maybe I should do a Metallica ranking ranking the first five albums including the uh, 598 uh, EP maybe I should do that no I won't <laughs> that's it Remember to check out some Mind Rot. This CD is available for, I don't know, five or six bucks. Maybe your neighbors got it and then uh, just steal it. You won't recognize it because your neighbor won't spin a uh, Mind Rot too much. Okay, have a nice weekend everybody. 25 minutes in, that's enough. See you soon.